Hello Half-Life, I couldn't be more excited to be here on Maui, Kanaha State Park with a familiar face that if you've ever been to Maui, you've been around this park, you've seen him before, Alan Cadiz. He's been helping people out in terms of doing wind sports and water sports for a long time and when it comes to wing foiling, Alan knows where it's at. So in this video, we're going to give you a couple ideas about when you get out there and go wing foiling, some considerations that you'll want to have and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram at the end. So Alan, a couple things here in Maui. Beautiful place. People can, can take lessons here. They can get out in the ocean. There's a lot of different areas that they, that they can try out. A beginning wing foiler. What do you think the first consideration is for them? Is it board size? Is it wing? Is it environment? Where they should go out? Where it will be safe? Well, all the above. I think the board is probably the most important, having a bigger board to start with. In fact, we start people off on a windsurf board, something, the small windsurf board is 180 liters, the larger ones are 230. And it's really just a platform, there's no foil, we just start people off on the big board. Uh, with a medium sized wing, I found that, that having a bigger wing is better than the smaller wing, you get better feedback. Oh, so just have, if you have more power in that wing, you're going to get a little bit more immediate feedback yes okay now to a point too big and the wing tip drags and that's a problem but generally starting off with a little bit bigger wing and once our students are able to sail out and back uh, stay up wind and actually power up the wing then we talk about a foil board okay and again the foil board is a is a larger 130 140 liter board to start off with it's really easy to to go down and get yourself a hundred liter board at the shop but you'll pay in the beginning. So if you can get your hands on like a SUP board, uh, preferably something that has dagger boards, you can attach the dagger boards or a windsurf board just for the first few hours, it'll really pay dividends when you get to the flow board. Okay, and so that's it. If you're gonna borrow a board from somebody, you wanna be able to, hopefully you can stand on it to make it a little bit easier. That's when you'll be in that 120 liter plus for most people. Yes, generally uh, one liter per kilo plus you know 10 or 20 percent if you're a beginner or maybe add some more if you're in a light wind location yeah okay and then uh when you actually go to purchase a board I, I i went through this whole process trying to figure it out do i get a sinker do i get something i can kneel on what i ended up choosing is this armstrong 511 here and that's mostly because i i'm in a in a lake environment where the wind goes up and down i know that i need to be able to be on that board and maybe paddle my way home if i need to what do you think the considerations are? When should wing foilers start looking in the sub 100? And you know, how is is there a, a rule of thumb there, or is it personal preference? I think you should be able to stay up wind comfortably and do your transitions comfortably before you go down to a smaller board. Now that being said, it is possible to go to a shorter board. And at, I actually went down to a 33 liter board for a while. Okay. And that worked. It was. It was when I first wrote it, it was, I was thinking this is impossible. But I stuck with it and found that it was very maneuverable. But I paid the price when the wind died. I sat around on the board a yeah. lot. It's relatively shallow out here at times. And at a, at a medium to low tide with a sinker board, I was driving my foil into the reef and it got pretty scratched up. Yeah. I ended up going back to this other Fanatic board and it's about 55 liters and it, it'll float me in all but zero wind. You know, you know, it's interesting that you bring up the uh, going into foil depth and th this isn't for a beginner. This is, Alan has a, a series of different videos that are really helpful in terms of how to get up and going, how to direct the wing, transitions and a bunch of other things. But you know what Alan didn't cover? And I'm gonna call him on it right now. Uh, buddy, when I go into the surf, I gotta be thinking about how high my, my foil mass <laughs> is out of the water. I was here at Kanaha yesterday and I went into the break. I thought I was awesome. I came down and I was carving down the turn. I got to the bottom and poof, I flew off in front of it. That thing hit. I didn't do any damage, luckily, because I, I didn't have straps on. I flew off. Everything was fine, people. But Alan, when you're coming into the wave, or even if you're beginning to go into the waves, when do you know you can go for it, and when shouldn't you go for it? I haven't quite figured that out. I don't know. I've always been really conservative in the surf. The last thing I want to do is roll around in the surf with my foil, and I have done that. Yeah. But, but I tend to stay on the shoulder. Now the younger kids are going for it. And that's, that's 
past my time. Why I don't have a back strap because I'm not going to jump. But yeah. the kids are jumping in the surf and that's where the smaller board pays off. That's really where it's at. You need to have a small board for jumping. I mean, if you're into jumping, you need to have a small board. Yeah, okay. But guys like us, maybe we stay out of the surf for a while until we get figured out. I was on the 85 centimeter mass, but, but it was a, a heck of a lot of fun. It, you know, I think one of the things about foiling that I've found in maybe you found it too, whether you're sup foiling or wake foiling or kite foiling or prone surf foiling, is they all kind of feed into each other. And one other question I have for you that wasn't in your videos, and I realize for beginners out there, this isn't necessarily relevant yet, but let me tell you, once you get a day that's blowing pretty good and you're on a 3-5 wing, 4-0 wing, 4-5 wing, you're gonna be faced with a couple, whether it's wind chop or you're going out through an ocean break, when that wave is coming at you and it starts to peak up to about your rib cage level and I'm flying on an 85 centimeter mast, I ate it yesterday doing that too, going, what's the trick? Do I just get on my front leg and drive it down just as the wave passes so I don't breach it? I try and avoid that and go around it. I mean, if there's a shoulder, you can go these, around it. These are, these are such simple answers. <laughs> Alan, I'm a little bit upset. I want some harder <laughs> answers. Well, you can... Retreat, retreat. I, I usually turn around when I see waves that look uh, bigger than I want to deal with. Yeah. The other really is, is to slow down a little bit and uh, not go out the back. Yeah. Now again, you know, the kids, they can just go for it and catch air. But uh, for us, I mean, I, I hit, hit the top of the waves sometimes, even though I'm using a hundred centimeter mast, I still bottom out on the top of waves. Okay. We've covered a couple beginner topics. You know, if you want to get out there, borrow a board, find a board that has plenty of leader that allows you to get on there, use the wing to begin to understand how the wind affects it, start working on your transitions. Uh, you can even begin working on staying up wind before you do that, then get yourself over to the wing foil board and try that. As you get into environments that maybe you haven't been in before, don't be like me, listen to Alan. Stay out of the surf at first <laughs> yeah. and slow down or turn around when you see the bigger waves coming so you don't shoot off the back. But most importantly, get out there and have fun. I, I gotta tell you, Al and I were talking about in terms of wing foiling and foiling in general, one of the coolest things is, is every time you get out there, you learn a little bit. And each time, whether that's just perfecting a move you've been doing or a new experience like landing up dry docking on the reef. <laughs> <laughs> you learn something each time it happens. So hopefully you enjoyed this very, very slight intro into the world of wing foiling. Maui's a beautiful place to do it. Alan's a great guy to, to take a lesson with should you have the opportunity to do so. The weather here is beautiful. The trade winds blow so much of the time of the year. I, I can't think of a better place. If you're able to get yourself to the Hawaiian Islands, this is a great place to do it. And if not, any body of water with a little bit of wind, it's possible to foil. It, it really is. It, it can be done almost anywhere. And people are doing it anywhere. And I think the thing that's so cool about it is unlike like kiting where you have to lay out your lines for 70 odd feet, with this, you have access and entry into the water pretty much wherever you'd like to. Yes. Which I think opens up a bunch of possibilities. Yes. But thank you so much. Please check out Alan's instructional videos and get out there and just have fun. Whatever body of water is near you, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them at the bottom and we'll get back to you. Right on. I think now we say aloha. 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 And if we don't see you on Maui, we'll see you on the water at some point. All right.